don't leave me. It's like, I'm telling you to go, but don't leave me. It's like, how a lot of people do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't like, you leave me. Leave me. Yeah, go away. Yeah, it's like, go away. I don't need you. you. You should go off and say, like, where are you going? Yeah. It's like, maybe he was doing that. Maybe he was doing me, like, I'm going to push you away in hopes that you won't go. Because you love me too much. Yeah, if you, if you, if you, that's how I'll know that you love me, is if you, if you don't let me push you away. I think so. What's up? Um, that recurred, you know, I have, my longest relationship was 25 years with the man that um, we never married. So it kept him coming up. He was 20 years older than I was. So he had a lot of, so we were not sharing a dream, really, because he already had the job. And I was 19 when I met him. So we were together. And the way I view relationships, I loved him from the very first. It took him 27 years to call me on the phone, two years after we broke up, to tell me he understood when I said I loved him. He never understood why I loved him, that I did. And then he thanked me two years after we broke up, left him a message on the machine. And I, I, I did not cry when we break, broke up because it was time. And a lot of people said, aren't you like, 25 years is a long time. The way I viewed the relationship was it was meant we needed to come together. You would never put the two of us together. We were night and day. Total different backgrounds, different interests. We did nothing together. We were not seen in public together. Really? didn't go places together, no trips together. So a lot of people didn't know I was in a relationship. So the relationship was based on an understanding that I trusted him and he trusted me. The trust was more important than the love there. I didn't have expectations of him. And he was like, okay with that, because he had been married prior. And he really had this concept in his head what marriage was. And he really did have bad relationships. So when I came along, he didn't know how to handle me because I was so different than what he had before. Uh -huh. And so he was very confused by it. And, but the relationship was something we had to nurture together. We put love into it. Love was an ingredient. But trust was the overriding thing. Like, what, what, the thing that, that I really want is friendship. I really want someone to know me, like like the whole sex thing that comes and goes. Mm -hmm. But I really want someone to really look into my face and know my weaknesses and know my strengths and accept me for what I am. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. not be afraid of me. Because I'm kind of scared. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing is, I, 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 I scare my wife. She is literally scared of me. And I don't want her to be scared of me. I'm not a scary person. I'm very wonderful. <laughs> Is it behavior that she's yeah. scared? Are you ever is she, are you ever scared of her? summer's day. Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaps hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his golden complexion dim. And every fair from fair sometimes declines, by chance or nature's changing course on trend. But thy eternal summer shall not fail nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. 
This is Shakespeare being so proud. He's saying, you're not going to die because I am a genius and I am writing about you. And there's going to be some TV actor reading this. <laughs> you, will never, you, will never be, you will never be less beautiful than you are right now because I'm writing about you right now. That right. Yeah. Can I ask a question? You indicated something about Shakespeare's love. How, like, and I have to look like Shakespeare, how sure are we of that? Because that really seemed like the only view of that song. This one? Yes. I guess. <laughs> I'm a genius. I'm a genius. It's basically, it's that's what it's like. I'm great. It's like, I can't compare myself to a summer's day. And it's like, because he, he does say he a lot. I'm wondering, if, you know, really was it Zelda? Was he looking at me? On some of these. And, and I'll he, say that in the did, did he really like, love that person, or did he love what he saw in that person that made him look up to himself? This is like, a very passionate man. This is a very intelligent man. And chances are he looked at people that saw that, you know, qualities he admired in himself. So he do. What if he felt that, as I understand that I'm a genius, but in the same way, we don't remember Shakespeare for the plays, the sonnets. We really can't think of a lot of other, flat better way to put it, contributions that he made in the long term. So, what if that's how, what he felt, that's all he had to offer? All I have to offer you is this, this written immortality that I can put down on the paper. I, I can't do anything else. I'm not that great, I'm not that fantastic in these other aspects, but I know I'm a genius when it comes to this. That sounds very selfless, and I don't get the feeling that you have been selfless. It doesn't necessarily suggest that he was selfless, it just suggests that I know, because to be a genius, you know you're a genius. Yeah. If you are a genius, you know it, and you embrace that. And there is that sense of isolation, there is that sense of, of all that, but there is that, also that sense of, this is all that I have to offer. So if this is all that I have to offer, God damn it, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it the best damn way I can. This is the, the, the other thing about Shakespeare is that he is, uh, uh, he, he, he's, he's from a little town. He's from, he, he, when he comes to London, he, he's like the, the, the he, he's like a hillbilly. <laughs> but he's the smartest hillbilly you'll ever meet. But like everyone that he's hanging out with, he's always, he's like a social climber. He's always trying to hang out with the cool people. But he knows that he's a hillbilly. And, and, uh, I, I think you just you, you can't ever forget that that he always was trying to hang out with the with the popular people, but he knew that he was like his clothes are old. I mean, his you know he, he he's, he's a uh, he's like the dirty guy in the corner, but he's he's he's, he's, he's a social climber. He wants to be important. He wants to be accepted, and the only thing that he has is his words. And some people like can see him for the genius he is, but most people just think he's a trash. So, uh, Puritan hatred of fear. Do they not maintain bawdry, insinuate foolery, and renew the remembrance of heathen idolatry? Do they not induce whoredom and uncleanliness? Nay, are they not rather plain devourers of maidenly virginity and chastity? For proof whereof, but mark the flocking and running the fear curves, daily, hourly, nightly, day, time and tide to see plays and interludes. I mean, it, it keeps going. It keeps going. They hated actors. That's the truth. Hell, my thoughts are not even excited. My thoughts are not excited when I get home. I just want to be calm, man. Okay, so we're going to have to Lord of my love, to whom in vassalage thy merit hath my duty strongly knit, to thee I send this written embassy to witness duty, not to show my wit. Duty so great, which wit so poor as mine, may make seem bare in wanting words to show it. But that I hope some good conceit of thine, in thy soul's thought, all naked will bestow it. Till whatever star that guides my moving points on me graciously with fair aspect, and puts apparel on my tottered loving, to show me worthy of thy sweet respect. Then may I dare to boast how I do love thee. Till then, not show my head, where thou must prove me. 
Again, this is such an asshole. <laughs> you are amazing. I am not witty at all. And basically, he's showing off. It's, it's that it's that level of bolt, I think. It's that pride of, I know I'm amazing, but I'm not good enough for you. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm amazing, and I'm sitting here trying to take everything that I know is awesome and perfect about me, and I'm trying to craft this perfect thing for you because you're amazing to me, and I am still not good enough. I just think this is just passive aggressive. Oh, big time. Big time. Big like, time. like, uh, oh, oh, how, how could, you know, how could I ever live up to your amazingness? I am just a stupid man. But he knows, Shakespeare knows that he is the most intelligent man ever on earth. Like, I don't know if he was such a good kisser, but he was a really good player. <laughs> I mean, really, when you read this, it's like, oh my god, what a weakling. Really? Sorry. Uh, 27. 